Well, in this video, we're going to be doing something just a little bit different. So what am I going to be doing? Well, stay tuned to find out. Hi folks, and uh, welcome to Isle of Wight Bushcraft. Um, on this particular video, what I wanted to do was a night out in a, a natural shelter. So uh, this one heading down to a forest not too far away, going to build a natural shelter and uh, do an overnighter in that. And um, this natural shelter, I want to build it completely out of natural materials, natural cordage, uh, roofing and so forth. Nothing man-made at all. Um, it's just a little uh, bushcraft project I want to try and um, see if it will stand up for the night and uh, keep me snug, snug inside it. So uh, I only want to do a little lean-to, but um, we'll head down to the forest and uh, and uh, yeah, we'll see how we get on. Um, the idea is is to um, you know there are different ways to build natural shelters, but the idea is is to find what's available, the resources that I can use. And uh, whatever's to hand is to build the best natural shelter that I can with those uh, with those resources. Um, I just thought it'd be a good exercise, and it's also good practice as well. So uh, let's head on down to the forest. Well, here we are in the forest and uh, having had a look around I'm noticing that there's lots of cedar in here um, quite a few downed ones as well and leaners so I'm hoping to be able to get some cedar bark for the for the roof of this natural shelter and there's quite a few bits of uh, dead fall dead standing as well so um, it's uh, there's some good resources by the look of it. There's also some hazel suckers as, around as well. I have been in this forest before, not in this particular area, but uh, there are some good resources, so it should be okay. And that's the thing with uh, with um, natural shelter built in, I personally think, is there's, um, obviously you need, you know, you need to have basic knowledge, but it's making the best of what's available in that particular locale. Here, yeah, quite fortunate because as I say there is cedar. I'll be able to use the cedar roots as well for cordage. Um, this shelter is going to be completely natural, nothing artificial, no uh, no paracord or anything like that, not even any dupe. Um, going to use um, completely natural stuff because if you were in a situation and you had to build a shelter, you wouldn't have things like that. So it's good to test yourself and. Uh, construct one out of completely natural materials. So I'm gonna have a look around, but one thing I won't do is I won't strip any bark off of any live uh, cedars or, you know, cedars that are standing upright. There are, as I say, there are quite a few leaners, uh, but I'll take the bark off of those because it's only a matter of time before they die anyway. So I think what we'll do is um, 
we'll start collecting materials. That's the plan. I'm going to collect lots of materials that I can and um, put it all, just store it. And then once I think that I've got sufficient materials, then I'll start building. I've chosen this location here because it's a nice flat area and there's some nice solid cedar trees that I can uh, just put a, a brace in, a piece of wood as a brace to act as a, uh, a ridge between those two trees behind me. And um, it's a nice clear area that I can lay on the ground between them. Also the fact that I'm under these trees, there are no widow makers about, but the fact that I'm under these, these cedar trees, that will afford some protection from rain in itself. So I think natural shelter building, always best in the woodland uh, for obvious reasons. You've got the materials and also you've got sh more shelter as well. You shelter more from the elements. Okay, well, I think what I'll do is um, get uh, take my machete and my buck saw, put that together, and um, we'll start um, amassing some, uh, some materials. Now you may have noticed that I uh, have a new pack with me this time and this is a BA Bergen which I'm uh, really pleased with actually. It's uh, more more literage so I can get more on board. I always found my last one I was always struggling just to uh, get everything packed in but this is a lot, um, lot more room in this especially with these side pouches so I'm pretty pleased with this. So it's first time out but yeah certainly more comfortable as well so um, I'm not worried too much about weight I keep pretty fit so uh, but it's the comfort and the carrying capacity yeah really pleased with that anyway let's get some materials Okay, so this is uh, this is what I'm looking for. You can see this old uh, cedar stump here, and uh, there's not too many um, eye pokers or small branches on this lower section, so it should be quite a smooth run of bark. If I can split that down there and take that a whole lot off, that'll give me a bit of roof in a couple of feet wide. I probably, yeah, nice sort of I don't know two by three foot piece of uh, roofing. So you don't need too many of those to give you a nice, a nice uh, shelter. So I'm going to set to and split that down there, round there, and uh, try and peel that off. So let's, uh, let's see how we get on. I'm just prising this bark off of um, this stump. Once you get it going, it should come off pretty easy. There we go. And as you can see, it's starting to peel really nicely. You might get the odd little split, but it doesn't matter. See, it gives me a nice piece of roof in that. So, a few pieces like this would be great. And the last little bit, all you do is just put your machete in and just keep prising it round. It's not that difficult.
there we go. Job done. So there we are, as you can see. Nice piece of roof in there. It smells lovely. <laughs> yeah. So good eight pieces. Eight or ten or eight. Yeah, eight pieces should be fine. Okay, let's take it back to the uh, shelter build. Just uh, sword round this piece here, and where this tree's been dead a while, it's a little bit easier to strip. But I've got a nice piece here, about five, about four, four and a half foot long. Right, this would be a nice bit for the roof. Yeah, I don't know what I'm cutting myself on, but a few little cuts of something. There we go. That's peeling back. So you might get, or you will, no doubt you will get a few holes and stuff in it, but that's not too worrying, it's not too much of a worry because we can just pug those with some leaves or something, but there we go. This is coming off actually quite a bit easier. There we go. Another nice piece. Well, there we are. Another, another nice two pieces for the uh, for the shelter build. Uh, a couple of more like that, and I think I'll uh, be ready to start putting the framework up. So let's take this back to the uh, to the shelter build. I think I've got enough um, roofing material now. now that's taken me about a, a, an hour, just about an hour to gather that. Um, what I found as well is um, off the dead, actual totally dead trunks, it's easier to remove than those that are still partly alive. Um, I'm, not talk I'm not talking about live trees, of course, but uh, leaners or stumps, but um, are not that old. The bark's still quite fresh. A little bit more difficult to remove, but um, but it's more robust, stronger. Uh, so yeah, I've got plenty plenty of uh, roofing material now. So I'm going to get some. There's plenty of deadfall, uh, straight uh, bits of uh, cedar and stuff for my framework. So I'm going to get some bits and pieces together now, and we'll start constructing. Well, I think I've got enough uh, roofing and pieces of timber for the framework. I might need a few more bits of hazel, but um, probably will actually. But what I need now is some uh, some cordage. So I'm going to just unearth a few uh, cedar roots and uh, use those as uh, as my cordage, and um, just put a strut or a, a ridge between these two trees behind me, and then we'll start assembling. So I've just uh, 
got myself a little digging stick and I'm just gonna um, unearth some some of the soil find a few roots and then um, pull them up from the ground and then just kind of trace them back um, I'll go out from the tree obviously if I move toward the tree the roots are going to get thicker and thicker and harder and harder to uh, release from the earth so if I find a root I'll work away from the tree and it should get easier as I go and hopefully I should get uh, a nice long piece of, uh, of root so just dig down a little bit normally not too far under the ground there we go there's one there that's the kind of thickness that I'm looking for there's another one there there's quite a few actually under there there we go that's a little bit thin well nice oh that feels a bit better that one So there we go, nice few roots have located, so we'll just uh, just pull those up now. Yeah, nice ones there. Some real nice ones there, lovely. That's coming up nice now. So there we are, Not the way along, lovely. Yeah, that's coming up a treat now. Great, that's a nice bit of root, that. Okay, so I just pull the rest of this up and we go back and we'll start tying up that, that main ridge part. There we are, I've got, some, I've got my uh, cordage, that'll be enough to uh, tie my, um, my framework together around these two trees behind me. And once I get that, um, that main ridge up, it's just a case of, uh, and that's secure, I can just lean my framework up against it and then we can... Uh, get going proper then so uh, crack on okay well my cedar root wasn't quite long enough to get around the tree but I've, fortunately there's a nice bit of um, bramble around so I've just dethorned that I'm going to use that to tie this piece of hazel between these two trees here this is a live uh, sucker piece of hazel um, so that obviously being live it's not going to collapse on me so I'm just going to lash this to these trees they're using this Dethorn Bramble. I've got a couple of nice pieces here, so uh, we'll do that. So I'm going to fix this about uh, about three, three and a half feet. So we'll just lash that round here. Like so. There we go. Still a few thorns on there. I <laughs> thought I'd got them all off, but here we go. And I think what I'll do is I'll uh, put two or three round here just to make doubly certain. So what I've done is I've just tied a an overhand knot, and then I'm just going to wrap these around on themselves, and I'll uh, I'll get a few more and put a few more the other way just to make doubly certain. Okay, so I'm just lashing this one, this tree here. Now what I have found, uh, a little bit of a happy accident really, is on the, um, on the roofing that I uh, sourced from around about, the, um, the cedar bark, on the dead cedar bark, um, you peel the inside of the bark and you get these lovely strands of uh, really good lashing material, really strong, and you can actually, even tie it in a knot. Let's see if I just peel some of that. There we go. It's making. Really good for lashing. Excellent. And it won't break or anything. It doesn't need any processing. It's brilliant and uh, so there's a little something that you might find useful guys it certainly helped me out here and it's speeding the uh, speeding it along brilliantly so i'm going to put about four or five of these on um sort of crisscross i'll just uh put another one around there as you can see you can tie a simple little overhand knots with it and it really does Look at that. It doesn't snap. Works a treat. For natural cordage, 
That is brilliant. Excellent. And that's not going anywhere. I could put a few um, logs, pieces of wood under there and wedge them up under there as well. Sort of notch, put a couple of V's in the end of the timbers and just pop those up there as well, just to make doubly sure. I think I'll do that as well. And uh, that's going to be really strong then. So what I'm doing now is just putting in these uh, these uprights. So I'm going to put another couple of members across between the two just to help support the uh, the cedar bark. And then I, I may even put some uh, some uh, leaf litter on top of that as well. So uh, we're getting there. There we go. Well, as you can see, I'm just sliding in these last few pieces of cedar bark. And what I'm doing is I've uh, obviously put it started from the bottom most of them have actually been long enough to go the whole whole length of the build but of the shelter but uh, these little bits at the end are just a little bit short so there we go I'm just putting those in there like so and uh, all I've done is I've put a couple of um, hazel cross members there to support the uh, the roof in and then I've put a uh, um, over the top of those pieces of cedar bark, I've put a, a hazel sucker, which I've tied in both ends, so I can the top ones that are layering over the, the lower ones, um, that that uh, hazel sucker will hold those in place. And I uh, just started getting some leaves as well, so um, the gaps are pretty good actually. It um, looks pretty tight, but I'm going to put some leaf litter and debris over the top anyway. I won't go the full amount. I mean, normally you're looking at fingertip to elbow, kind of 18 inches depth, but I don't think I'll need that on this. But it's just for, you know, extra extra security. And if there are any little holes or um, cracks, it will just pug those up. So uh, I've got a couple of more pieces of bark, which I'm just going to slide in that top section there. And then we're done. It's just in case I get a little bit more leaf uh, litter pile that on top and uh, I can settle in uh, my cosy little shelter for the night. Okay, well that's the uh, that's the shelter build finished. So uh, I'm just going to trim on trim off some of these um, these bindings. And uh, what I've used the leaf litter of it's mainly oak leaves in here. Um, I mean beech leaves would be the best, but oak will do. Uh, I don't think it'll be. I don't think. I'm worried about rain anyway too much. I'm not sure if there's any forecast or not, but uh, I'm pretty sure that that will hold out anyway. And it looks pretty good. So uh, <laughs> just gonna sweep that out a little bit and um, get my kit in there and uh, make myself snug for the night. Let's take that next out, I think. And uh, remove the mask. Lose it.
got this uh, ground sheet here. So I'm just going to lay down on the ground just to see if there's any, any dampness. It's not too bad in there. It has been raining recently. Hasn't it? I'll put that down and that'll be my ground sheet. Um, I haven't bought my uh, X Therm, uh, my Therma Rest X Therm. That's a great sleep pad, but I didn't really want to risk it. But uh, this is only a cheap one from uh, uh, a supermarket. I think, I think it's six, seven pound. But it's it's a really lovely, comfortable mattress. It's a bit heavy to carry, but I haven't had to walk far, so it's not a problem. But the reason I like it, being on the ground, is it elevates me off the ground as well. So I've got I've got this ground sheet down, plus this uh, this um, this mattress, which is very comfortable. I say it's only a cheap heat, but it really does the job. And uh, and uh, I bought my uh, Arctic sleeping bag as well. Now, if it's too hot. I'll just unzip it. The reason I like this sleeping bag, it's my favourite one actually. But the reason I like this is because it's, uh, it's a top opener. So uh, if I need to get out in the middle of the night, it makes life a lot easier to get in out, particularly when I'm using it in a hammock. So there we are, pillow. Uh, put a pillow in and that, and I'm ready to, I've got my shelter for the night. And uh, I think what I'll do is I'll just I'm only going to have a very, very small little fire just for cooking on, that's all. Um, I don't want to catch this leaf litter. And I, you've got to be careful of that. Imagine waking up in the night and this is on fire. <laughs> would not be good. So um, over there, I'm going to do a very small little cook fire, that's all. And um, put all my bits and pieces out and uh, we're good to go. Well, there we are. There's, uh, there's camp sorted for the night. And uh, I think I shall be pretty comfortable and cosy in here. If it rains, I'm pretty confident in this. That cedar bark's overlapped pretty well. So uh, I'm pretty confident if it does rain. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased with it. Take me about, I would say, half a, about four hours to build it, uh, all in all. Um, but I have been filming as well. Um, but I think it was worth the effort to get the cedar bark. That's... Uh, I'm pretty confident in that really good roofing. And I dare say others will come across it and use it as well. Just don't destroy it. <laughs> well, there we are. And uh, so I'm gonna get a fire pit ready now and, um, and a little, uh, little pot crane as well. So let's crack on. <laughs> so I'm only going down. It's going to go down a little way, so I just want a little small, just a small little cook fire, that's all, and uh, something to sit by a bit later, just a small little cosy fire, nothing huge, I think that'll do, that's pretty much done now, a little bit more maybe, there we go. All I do is just use the old machete just to clean those roots up. There we go. Job done. Well, just processing some uh, firewood, some nice old bits of oak here. A little bit punky, but not too bad. All right for what I want. Yeah, great little. Obviously, someone's um, sawn this down in the past, but it does make a great little rice. I'll just. Uh, I want some. I only want short pieces. It's about so forth. I don't need too much wood, but. Uh, Nothing worse than um, searching around for wood 
because you've run out so I like to have uh, more than enough and I can always use it again so we'll carry on with this I'm just going to make myself a, a pop crane now, just use a bit of this uh, green hazel. I'm just putting this um, stake to stop this pot support from springing up this end. That's saying get it firmly into the ground. Then don't want the pot, to, don't want this collapsing and my pot falling into the fire. Uh, finish it off. Pan stick for me, uh, little pop crane. There we go. So I've got five notches, that should be plenty. So this is uh, this is camp finished now. We're all set to go. So there's uh, there's the natural shelter, and just across the uh, way you'll see a little fire pit there and a pot stand. All good to go. And again, uh, this natural shelter, nothing man-made at all. All natural, all from the woods. So it shows you what uh, you can do. As I said earlier, about half a day to build that. Okay, but it's there that time of day to uh, light a fire. And uh, there's still enough sun left. I'm going to try and light a bit of um, a bit of chaga with a magnifying glass there with a the lens, and uh, hopefully that'll um, that give me my fire. Now the good thing about chaga is once it's alight, it'll uh, smoulder on for a long time. I just hope there's enough power left in the sun. Yeah, I think it's going. There we go. You just see it's starting to smoulder now. That's it. Once it starts to smoke, we can give it a blow. And uh, then we have fire. Now the good thing with chaga of course is um, once it's started it will smoulder for a long time so especially if you've got a couple of pieces if that starts um, burning a bit low then you can just transfer that uh, that's um, cinder to, to another piece 
um, I can take my time now. I'm just going to gather some. Uh, I've got a little bit of uh, dry tinder there. I'm going to use some of the cedar bark as well. Just um, buff that up a little bit, and then uh, make a little nest. Put that in the nest. Blow to flame, and uh, hopefully that'll give them a fire. So I'm just buffing up some cedar bark, and as you can see, it doesn't take much. And it buffs up really nice, gives a lovely, lovely nest. So uh, the inside of cedar bark is um, useful for so many things. Nearly there. So as you can see, there's our uh, our cedar bark nest. It's lovely and fine. So if I put the chaga in that now. Uh, which is a big piece. Probably don't need all of that. I'm going to break a little bit off actually. There we go. Put that in there. What I'm going to do is uh, blow that to flame now. take my Y stick and then I'll just lower that on top so I'll just take my Y stick Lower that on top, let the fire get on there. As I uh, said before in a previous video, the beauty of a Y stick is uh, you don't douse the fire. There we go, that's catching nicely now. That's lovely. I can just slide those on. There we go. That's the beauty of a Y stick, it gives you so much control. some of these other pieces on Get a little bit of a heart going let it die down a little bit and then uh, I'm gonna put something on to cook our minted lamb so I'm just going to cut this up and uh, that's why I always like to use a plastic plate because you can turn it upside down and uh, use it as your chopping board so it doubles as both so just cutting these into bite-sized pieces and then I'm going to um, 
sear these in, seal these in the uh, in the billy cam with a bit of oil. Uh, add the veg, add some stock, and then let it cook away for about an hour. So I've got a nice little um, bed of embers there now that I can cook on. So we uh, will uh, put the billy can on. Should we lower that a little bit just to let it heat up? And then we'll put our meat in. Okay, so uh, in goes the meat. Now that the meat's seared and just purring away, we'll chop the potato. Not too big a pieces, otherwise it'll take ages to cook through. They'll be harder in the middle. But... And I'll uh, do an onion as well. I'm doing the onion. the onion. Got the onion on the back of the plate helps to clean it as well from the meat so you kind of will give it a wipe anyway and stuff but uh, it does help. Yeah. Now we chop our carrot randomly. I've got a Thing about round slices, I uh, hate round slices. <laughs> it just looks so ordinary. I always think, cut like this, it just, uh, I don't know, sort of uh, makes them look a little bit more interesting. And then in, into the pot they go. I'll put some uh, Swiss chard in there as well. And then I'll put some water in now, I think. So I'll just let that cook away now for a while, uh, just kick back and relax for a little bit and uh, then enjoy some dinner. Well, I've been working pretty hard so I'm glad I bought the old hammock chair with me. Well the hammock, this is a net hammock which I use as a hammock chair, very comfortable so I'm going to uh, get this set up and uh, which won't take long and then have a relax. Instant chair. Very comfortable chair as well, that's nice. Oh yeah. That's boiling away lovely now. In fact, it's probably boiling a little bit too much. All I've got to do is just lift that up one notch. And put it a little bit higher above the fire. That's better. Something I meant to uh, mention earlier uh, when building a natural shelter, um, something to bear in mind if you're going to have a go yourself as well. Um, level ground if you can and um, just be aware that you want it to be free draining, quite a, you know, raised or dry ground and you want to wake up in the night uh, if it's rained and uh, it's an area where the water tends to gather, it doesn't drain that well. So yeah, good draining area as well. That's just, oh, that's purring away nice now. Perfect. Give about another quarter of an hour and that'll be ready.
I like the uh, long spoon. I carved this long spoon out of a piece of uh, chestnut, sweet chestnut, because uh, I prefer them like this. There we go. Mm. It's about it's about half past seven in the evening, so uh, it's a late dinner for me. I'm just about ready for this. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, yeah. Well, that really was a lovely dinner, but now I'm uh, going to have myself a nice cup of coffee. And the uh, water's just boiling. Oh, this is the uh, this is the time of this is the time of the day that I love. Just before the sun, or just after the sun's gone down, all goes quiet. Apart from the shotgun in the distance, some poor little rabbit or pheasant just bought it. Still. Great. Well, as you can see, I think I'll be very cosy tonight. And uh, I think I'll just grab a lay down now, have a little rest. Ah, oh, that's really comfortable, that. It's quiet. Beautiful evening. Now, I don't know if you can see from over there, but I've got some lavender just hung up here where I've got no net or anything. And it's that time of the year when the mozzies are, are in force. So I've got this um, lavender just hanging above my head and uh, hopefully that'll help keep them at bay. Uh, I don't want to wake up uh, with a face like the moon. Well, I certainly feel at uh, certainly feel at one with the woods. It's lovely being under here and just seeing uh, all the woods just around me, being immersed in it, as it were. Beautiful. Uh, I got a fair old. Uh, you see the the angle of uh, this lean. So I've got a fair old, uh, fairly steep angle. Obviously, the steeper the angle, the uh, the better the runoff. If it's too shallow, the the water will struggle to run off. But you keep it as steep as you can. The runoff's better. But yeah, I should be fine under here tonight. I've got a couple of pieces of chaga on this log here just to give some extra smoke just to keep the uh, biting insects away as well but uh, the incognito seems to be doing the trick as well so I'm pleased about that. 
it's, uh, it's getting late now, so uh, even though it's still light. Um, so uh, I'm going to turn in for the night now. So uh, I'll see you in the morning. Well, that's it now, folks. There's uh, time to pack up.
Well, there we are, folks, all packed up and ready to go. Uh, Got to leave now, but like I always say, smile because it happened. Don't cry because it ended. So, uh, gonna head on out of the forest and uh, head on back home. Well, there we are. I hope you enjoyed that. That was a natural shelter build. Um, the idea of the video is not to instruct uh, anybody on how to make natural shelters. I'm sure we all know how to do that. But it's just an exercise, a little bushcraft project, um, and something a little bit different. So um, hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, but that's it for the moment, folks. Um, all being well, I'll see you on the next video. But for the moment, take care out there, and uh, bye for now.